All right, today we are doing a video all about the Nord 901 Expedition versus the Tiger 900 Rally Pro. If you saw my video, I think it's episode two about building a motorcycle clothing brand, you saw that bike in there and I told you I was gonna do a video about it soon. I'm doing a comparison video first because the Tiger is still pretty fresh in my mind. Having been, you know, about a month since I came off the Colorado BDR, still refresh. So I wanted to compare the two bikes now that I've got some time on the Norden and I've had a lot of time on the Tiger 900 Rally Pro Argon Edition. And so I wanted to compare the two bikes. If you're new to adventure bikes and you're thinking about getting which, which of these, which one would I recommend? Okay, so quick caveat. Actually, I was really interested in the Nord 901 before I got the Tiger, but nobody had the Expedition model yet. And that's important because the Expedition model has better off-road suspension, has the Explorer, I think it's the Explorer, Pro. I don't think it's the Pro because the it's a WP Explorer because the Explorer and then there's the Explorer Pro which is on like the KTM 890 Rally Pro Edition. So it has like the cone valves. This doesn't have the cone valves, so I think it's just the WP Explorer suspension. And I was really interested in that suspension setup. The bike is a little bit taller with it. I think it's 240 mil instead of 220. But I was interested in that bike. They didn't have it at the time I was looking for a smaller adventure bike. I rode a bunch of other bikes, ended up going with the Tiger at the time because I thought it was the best mix of thing, everything. And we'll talk about that again a little bit later. I think there's some references I made to in my Tiger video that I think are still important when you compare these two bikes if you're looking at them new. Another caveat, I actually really wanted a KTM 1290 Super Adventure R and I was, gonna have to sell my bike privately which i had a, i had, lit, had it listed didn't have a lot of interest in it yet but then when i found out my dealer that is also a triumph dealer they also sell husqvarna they had a wp or they had a nord 901 expedition and they were really interested in getting my bike back it back and actually the like i think one of the shop managers there really wanted to buy it so like it just everything worked out in my favor and actually the guy at the my local ktm dealer if you haven't seen my ktm dealer disaster story it just seems to continue with them the sales manager over there told me he didn't even want to look at my bike like he was like oh it's triumph tiger i'm not even touching it which was weird you'd think like in the slower motorcycle market you don't want to make a deal anyways they had a ktm 1290 super adventure r i actually really wanted that bike but i didn't end up getting it Maybe I'll have to wait in order for the 1390 to come out. For 1390 Rally, which is the rumor. So maybe go there. Okay, I'm getting long-winded on this whole part. So let's get into comparing these two bikes. The number one thing I think is most important between the two bikes is the seat height. Now the Nord 901 seat height actually, I don't think is much taller. I don't know the exact numbers. It's not, but from a physical standpoint, actually measuring from the ground up, not much taller. However, it is wide. If you watch any video on the Norden, whether it's the older version or this new Expedition model, you'll hear that one of the biggest complaints is that the seat is wide. I didn't realize how wide it was until I actually rode it. It is very wide. Now, when you're on the road and you're doing road miles, I understand the initial design concept behind it, like especially with the Explorer, right? It's meant for longer road trips. And so that wider seat is going to be more comfortable when you're doing longer stints. But if you're doing a BDR, you're going to be standing a lot. And so I personally would have rather have the narrower seat. I think they made a mistake. I think it's the biggest, well, there's two down two flaws with the Norton. I think this is it. This, this, the width of the seat, it just spreads your legs out too wide and then it makes it hard to stand up. And as you can see here in this little video clip, like I struggle to get the kickstand up and the kickstand down, especially if the ground is low to my right side. So if on my right side, I can't easily get my right foot down, it makes it really hard. And actually with my right foot down, my left foot is so kicked out that it makes it hard to get that kickstand and it's kind of a bit of a struggle. Where the Tiger, I think one of the best things about the Tiger is it is narrow, but comfortable. So their seat is narrow, it feels super low to the ground and is really comfortable. So it's really easy to get one foot down. I was pretty close to being able to two foot that bike. And so from a seat height standpoint alone, especially if you're a new rider, I think this is crucial because you're gonna to wanna to dab a lot. So you're gonna to wanna to put your feet down because that's kind of the instinct when you're initially riding is that, especially for me, it was like anything, anytime things got a little uncomfortable, it's like, okay, can I get my foot down? And it's like this, it's this crutch that you lean on. Now that I've had a couple years under my belt and I've been riding a lot, 
I don't worry about it so much. So the wide seat on the Norden is not really such a big deal because I can still one foot it pretty easily. The biggest thing is really just the kickstand when the ground is low on the right side because then it really kicks my foot out. And so I'm five foot nine on a good day, 30 inch inseam to give you an idea of my height. So if you're a new rider and you're taller, maybe you're 5'10", 5'11", over six feet, probably won't be an issue for you. But if you're like me and you're kind of like not very tall, it is a bit of an issue just because it really spreads your legs out. They do have a seat concepts makes this a narrower seat uh, that's supposed to help with that. So I might get that, see if that improves it. But from just an overall seat height ability, if I was a new rider and I was gonna be doing a decent amount of like general off-road, not a lot of technical off-road, I probably would go the Tiger because it just is, it feels so low feels super easy to manage when you're still kind of crutching yourself through trying to get your feet to the ground. So on seat height, I got to give it to the Tiger. It's probably one of the best features about it. They really got that figured out how this, the basically the height of the seat. The same thing is power. Uh, this one is unique because they're roughly the same horsepower. They're around 100 horsepower. They think they're both making like 105 horsepower or something like that. I think actually technically the Tiger is a little less than 100. I think it's like 96 horsepower somewhere in there because it's like a 23 and a half. On the title it was a 24. So I don't think it had the new horsepower numbers which the new ones are about 105. So let's talk about the new Rally Pro. If you're considering the new Rally Pro, it's about 105. So roughly the same horsepower figures. I feel that they both down low for me, which is really important when you're kind of, I like to be in a taller gear and kind of tractor through stuff. I feel that both of them do a great job down low. They don't feel like they struggle if you're in that 1500 to 2000 RPMs, like just trying to tractor through stuff. I feel like they do a great job. The power on the road is, in my opinion, is much better with the Tiger. So if you're gonna be doing like dirt roads, in a lot of highway, I would go the Tiger. The Tiger, that triple, and especially with no engine braking, if you, if you saw my, my BDR video, uh, uh, section two of the, the Colorado BDR where there's a lot of steep stuff, with basically with no engine braking, like if you're on the highway, you can like roll off the throttle and you're almost like kind of just coasting. It's really, really smooth. It's really buttery. It sounds really good with that T-plane crank. So if you put a new muffler on there, you get a good sound. I feel the power, especially because there's a sport mode on the Tiger, so if you really kind of want to go rip around and rip canyons, all within the law, riding at 80% of your limit, never exceeding the rules of the road, and never exceeding your ability, of course. But if you want to put it in sport mode and go have fun, I feel that the Tiger is better on the road. Um, with a caveat, and we'll touch on that a little bit later, the one benefit to the Norden as far as power goes. When you're riding fast, and it's not really a power thing because the power the power is a lot more linear, I feel like. The power is, is just kind of, the power band seems far more linear throughout the stroke. Um, you know, so wherever you are in the, in the throttle, it's kind of a linear feeling. It doesn't seem to like ramp up. Where the Tiger kind of ramps up in the power band, this feels a lot more just kind of linear, so much easier to get through. So power, I would say if you're gonna do dirt road, basic dirt roads and highway, I would have to give it to the Tiger. I feel like the power is just better. Next, let's talk about suspension. And this was a big thing for me. I will say right out the gate, it 100% goes to the Norton. If you watched the beginning of this video, you know why. Also, we're probably a little, about, a little over halfway through, so if you haven't yet, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all the YouTube stuff, it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It just helps the channel. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, do all that stuff. Leave a comment about why you think my videos are awful, why you think I look stupid, why I'm ugly, why this channel is terrible. Leave all your terrible comments below and let's get back to the suspension. So the suspension, the Expedition has the WP Explorer suspension. I think I think the Pro is the cone valve. I'm getting lost here, so I'll leave a comment here if it's not, if it is actually the Pro and the Pro is not the cone valve and there's some extra, it's like Rally Pro for the cone valve version. I don't remember, but it doesn't have the cone valve. So the cone valve on the WP is reserved for the like 890 Rally Pro, which they only made like a thousand of those bikes. So they didn't make a lot of them but it's basically got the same suspension on the 890 Rally standard model. And the small bump is just so much better. The first thing I noticed 
and EI still kind of had the very more like 80 20 street bias tires on this. On this bike, I, that is also important. So, like comparing the two bikes, I did put the Bridgestone Battle Axe AX41s or whatever they are on this bike as well because roughly they, they had all the caveat. So, but another shout out to my local dealer, Altery Motorsports, because this was super cool of them. I had bought an extra set of tires for them because they, they, these tires don't last very long. The front was the same, but the rear wasn't. So they're like, dude, bring that other tire in and we'll just swap you out for the bigger. So that's another thing to think about when you go off-road is the, the Norton has an 18 inch tire. The Tiger only has a 17 inch tire in the rear. So you have 21-17 combo on the Tiger and you have a 21-18 combo on the Norton. So which just means it's the, the bigger tire just means it's gonna monster truck better over stuff. So not only do you have better suspension, and we'll talk about the if you haven't heard my watch my color BDR video, I'm gonna talk a lot of repeat there. So if you have, you may want to skip this part. But the 18-inch wheel WP Explorer Pro, I haven't even adjusted yet. I haven't even gotten into the manual this first like 300 miles and adjusted it so that it's like suits my riding style. I've kind of just left it how it was from the factory. I haven't really adjusted anything and it's far better. The small bump compliance or like if you mountain bike, it would be like your low speed compression setting. So like all the kind of the small chatter, not the big hard hits, it is so much more plush. It just eats that stuff up and it's like so much smoother. In fact, I actually took the Norton 901 in this kind of like deep V rut in this like no local kind of BLM area where I'll go practice at, where I didn't take the tire through there. And no questions, I didn't feel, I wasn't worried at all about getting through that. Caveat though, I had just finished the Colorado BDR and so I'd spent a lot of time on the dirt and doing like section two, which was harder. So like this is nothing compared to section two. So my skills did get better. So it's not to say that I probably wouldn't take the Tiger up there now, but on the Norton, I just didn't, there was no hesitation. I kind of just went down and up this ravine or on the Tiger, I hadn't taken it that way. And I actually took the Norton back into where I normally take my Honda 450 RL to rip around in the BLM land and kind of explore it out. So let's get into the Tiger suspension and why I just don't like it. It's got the Showa suspension, which is good, but the problem is, is the geometry of the suspension. So if you mountain bike, it's super easy, right? Like mountain bikes now are going to like 64 degree head tube angles. So you have like a downhill mountain bike, which is gonna be like 63 and a half, maybe these days, 64 degrees. And then you're gonna have like a cross country race bike, which maybe is like 66, 67 degrees. The tiger sits on that tighter head tube angle. Uh, in motorcycles, they use rake instead of head tube. So it's a little bit confusing. So the rake on the Tiger is like 24 degrees. The rake on the Norton is 26. So two degrees is a big difference. Now the Tiger has a way to work around this and kind of rake the bike out a little bit more. You might gain a half a degree. So you let all the preload out of the rear shock and then you basically crank the preload down on the front shock. Why cranking the preload will rake the front out? I'm not sure. Maybe because you're not sitting so tall in this, and maybe it forces you to sit. It compresses the suspension, so you're kind of like sitting taller and you're not gonna dive as much because you're kind of pre-compressing that spring and making it stiffer because you're kind of already in the stroke. I don't know the, the scientific answer there, but they basically have you preload as much on the front springs. The downside is, is with all that preload, when you're on the road, it is super chattery, right? There's no small bump compliance because you're so deep in the stroke of that spring already that the front end is just like balances. I got used to it because I wanted it to be ready for on and off road. If it was done electronically, so maybe like the 1200 Rally Pro, it's all done electronically. If it's done electronically, then it might be way easier, right? Because then it'll just switch to preload for you and when you switch modes but you're not gonna break a wrench out and crank for three to four minutes every time you change between dirt road and on-road. So I pretty much just left it in off-road mode, except when I did have luggage on my way out to the BDR, I did adjust the preload because of the extra weight on the rear spring, and then once they carried my luggage, I took all that preload out. So with that steeper rake, it just, in having to preload it to try to get the, to try to rake the bike out a little bit more and make it more stable, Front end just doesn't handle as well. I end up taking some of the preload out and trying to find a sweet spot because you still need some small bump compliance without it being so rough. That means it kept the rake back a little bit. However that works, but that's what Triumph recommends in the manual. So 
I would 100% give it to the suspension to the Norden. And I know like, I mean, for me, I feel like WP is like the Fox or Ray Rock Shocks of adventure bikes. Like their suspension is just dialed. It's really, really good. The Ducati Desert X seems to have really good suspension. I don't know if it's an in-house brand or if they're outsourcing it to somebody like Showa. But the Showa on the Tiger on how this one is set up, just not great. The Showa suspension on my Harley Road Glide CVO is awesome and actually rides really good. Um, actually, I don't notice, really don't notice any difference with the Legends rear, Legend Arc rear shocks with the Showa. So I don't think it's Showa's problem. I think it's just a design problem on the Tiger. But the Tiger handles really, really well on the road. So um, we'll get into so we'll get into that a little bit more on like conclusion piece. So we'll kind of reevaluate that. Number four, I think this is important. Let's just talk about looks. I mean, it's important, right? If you don't like the look of your bike, you don't want to grab the keys, you don't want to get out on it, you don't want to see it. You feel super vain. I feel super vain, but I embrace it, <laughs> right? Like if your bike doesn't look cool. You don't want to ride it. Uh, so for me, I, I think the Norden 901 Expedition with this new blue paint scheme is the best looking adventure bike. It may not be the best bike, like the 890R Rally is probably it's basically like a street legal dirt, big street legal dirt bike and maybe awesome. I do the 1290R, the looks have really grown on me. That kind of grasshopper front end, I love the look of it. Uh, I, I think it looks so mean. I hated it at first when I first got my 1290S. I hated it, I thought it was the ugliest looking bike, <laughs> but now it has grown on me and I think it looks so mean and I love it. I think that bike look actually looks awesome. It really grew on me. So like my opinion completely changed on the looks of the 1290. But I still think the Norden 901 Expedition with that bl new blue paint scheme, it is the best looking adventure bike. It just looks super cool. It makes me want to ride it. It makes me want to go out and have fun. I'm over the whole beak thing, you know, like the Tiger has the traditional beak thing, kind of like the BMWs have, and I'm trying to think of what other brand does the beak. Even Ducati went away from the beak. They do have the beak on their uh, V4 Rally, their uh, V4S. So it, yeah, I'm just not into the beak look. So I think this bike, looks wise, hands down, goes to the Nord. Okay, so last but not least, let's get into conclusion, what you're waiting for. Based on all of those things, I, I think for me, the Norden's way better. The suspension is better. I wanna get better at riding off-road. I have fun ripping around uh, the BLM land around my house. I have fun after doing the BDR. I wanna do another BDR. So for me, the Norden, hands down, I can deal with the wider seat because I have built up skills to be able to handle the, basically the height that the width adds, if that makes sense. But if I were new and I was going, wasn't planning on doing a BDR, and I was gonna do, my ideas of adventure was decent amount of road time, maybe some country farm roads, dirt roads to get back to some cool campsites, but I'm not really looking to do like section two of the Colorado BDR or Lockhart Basin, which is the hard section of the Utah BDR down near Moab. If I wasn't interested in doing any of those things, the, the Tiger all day. The Tiger on like section, I think it is section four, of the Colorado BDR, so basically from gypsum to steamboat on those back dirt roads, it is awesome. That thing rips. And actually the, you know, over a not as steep technical route like the, I'm drawing a blank on the, the past name. It's it's the section from, from gypsum to Buena Vista. There's a pass there, I'm drawing a blank. I'll put a title here, I just don't remember. Even on that pass, it was a little more technical, a little more rocky. The bike did fine. I would much rather have the Norden on that section, but it did fine. And all the fast dirt roads getting there, way better. Now, the long dirt road sections where you, you go up over from lakes, or getting from Buena Vista to Lake City, which is just a lot of fast dirt roads, but you have the first pass coming out of Lake City, which is a lot of babyhead rocks. Norden 901, because that, that's where you really need that small bump sensitivity because it's just a lot of fast chatter, not a lot of big hits, right? Norden 901 all day. But if I was gonna do basic dirt roads and a lot of pi pavement, Tiger all day. It is, the power delivery is great. It's got a sport mode. 
you can switch from regular off-road to sport mode without having to come to a complete stop. But the, actually I take that back, you can't. Total pain in the butt, that's another thing. You can't switch between the modes without coming to a complete stop. Where the Norden, you can change modes just by letting off the throttle and it'll switch out of, mode, out of whatever mode you're in and into the other mode, which, is a, which was a big pain when you're riding with other people on the BDR. So another thing to the Norden. For me, right now, as far as like looks, what I'm trying to ride, the Norton, because I just want to do more BDRs, hopefully get to New Mexico or Utah, maybe Idaho next year. And so I'm really looking forward to getting that bike out there and doing those. And I'll hopefully do a video depending on which one I do. So in conclusion, if I was going to, if I was new, really worried about being able to put my feet down, can do a lot of roads and a lot of like dirt roads, you know, dirt roads and street time, Tiger all day. I think it's the better bike for that easier to manage as far as height goes. Norton with that wide seat, it's just, it's just, it's kind of a killer. I think it, it makes it not very approachable if you're not comfortable with a tall bike yet. So that's kind of where I would lean Tiger in that case. So Triumph would win if I was a beginner, I think. Yes, until later on. But if you feel that you could handle the wide, you're not short like me and you're a little bit taller and you can handle the higher seat, go Norton all day. Anyways, gotten really long if you've made it this far subscribe hit the notification bell all that fun stuff leave a mean comment below as to why you think my videos are stupid you hate this who cares i guess i had that was one comment i had who cares <laughs> obviously you do you left a comment <laughs> doesn't bother me none don't watch it if it's not your thing but the fact that you took time out of your day to comment tells me you care so tell me why you don't care in the comments below and until next time stay safe out there